please pause to read it. Please pause to read it. Some organizations collapse, others remain viable. Some corporations prosper, others are merged and cannibalized. Some hedge funds take big hits, while a small number of fund managers become billionaires. George Soros is one of them, but he is not lucky. He discovered the power of cybernetic thinking on his own. Financial commentators frequently misuse the notions of negative and positive feedback. Soros got it right. Negative means self-correcting differences, and positive feedback means accelerating differences. Now that the world is listening, Soros says, the system needs fixing. Why? Because cybernetic laws are being ignored by the financial world. Think of George Soros as a political activist with lots of money, intelligence, and personal congruence. His very recent series of lectures at the Central European University in Budapest give full detail of his theories and strategies. Now this is where Stafford Beer's lifetime work on cybernetics and the problems of governance come into play. We need a bridge connecting George Soros to management cybernetics. A friend of mine said that instead of Karl Popper, Stafford Beer should have been the chief resident scientist philosopher for the modern world. Perhaps Soros, who studied with Popper, would agree. Two men representing two scientific paradigms. Traditional science searches for cause-effect, knowledge you can trust in a mechanical world. Cybernetics is about circular control loops and learning as a perpetual process. Relativistic knowledge? Yes, but the creator of computer and communications technology. The key then is to take the best from both worlds. This is what Soros has done very successfully. He identified a cognitive function and a manipulative function. Please pause to read. Please pause to read. The question Soros wanted to answer is very old. Is this real or a product of my perception? The stock market is real. What type of predictions can we make? Consider fallibility and reflexivity and you will be one step ahead in the lesson to be learned. Here are three instances of the reflexivity principle in action. Reflexivity is another word for the characteristic circularity present in complex systems. The participant plays a dual role of observer and doer at the same time. Systems theory is precisely about extracting knowledge within the limitations of highly complex situations. Soros sees a connection to self-referential statements, as does cybernetics. Cybernetics feels at home with relativity, paradox, and self-fulfilling prophecy. But as a matter of fact, politicians and lawyers were the first to discover that in a very complex system, all truths are relative. Maturana seems to agree, but nobody is feeling sorry for politicians or lawyers. Check it out. Self-reference is present in the U.S. Constitution. The document begins with the phrase, We the people. Even software operating systems are self-referential too. What do you think booting the system is all about? As of now, the financial system works as a typical complex adaptive system where millions of participants are exchanging money and stocks and loans, but high complexity breeds fallibility. So perceptions or rules for interpreting the world are necessarily limited by cybernetic laws of communication channel capacity. Participants inevitably filter out part of the complexity, so they devise amplifiers such as sophisticated algorithms and computerized trading systems to try to outsmart other agents, participants, investors. Perception filters are inevitable, as Soros explains. Brain science agrees, too. Strong beliefs residing in the neocortex of the brain become hardwired at the reticular activating system. Beliefs become built-in filters. People use the authority method 
to fix belief, says Beer. Then they copy-paste everything in their brains, says Dawkins. Computerized systems and instant communications transmit memes and make the financial system incipiently and dangerously unstable. Beer warned of this many years ago. Banks, which in principle are society's financial shock absorbers, have contributed to the instability because as they search for profits, they ignore their delicate balancing role. According to Soros, fallibility and reflexivity translate into market prices oscillating wildly. Cybernetic knows that time lags in control measures are more than enough to rupture a system, as the Tacoma Bridge proved. Here is another reason why things go wrong. Here is another way to explain this. Debt and equity leveraging are an amplification scheme which is dependent on the recursive creation of money. Please note that the process used by Federal Reserve to create money is exactly the same process that banks use to create their own money. So anyone who gets credit is actually creating private money. This private money has a different intrinsic value, but is measured against the same standard which, by law, is the Treasury bill. Proof of this is that when banks fail, you see the bank money in your account, but you cannot change it for the green stuff. When you go broke, your personal money is worthless and your credit card cannot collect. The whole system collapses when a country like China is not able to collect from the Federal Reserve. Soros describes the typical pattern of a crisis. Please push the pause button to read the whole text. Here is the culprit. Call it the creation of funny money. The circle links the consumer to the private banks, to the Federal Reserve, to the U.S. Treasury, and back to the same consumer in a taxpayer role. Mistakes and misunderstandings get amplified and take longer to correct. The correction comes as a catastrophic crisis. Here is the agency problem. It involves two management cybernetics ideas. The first is pathological autopoiesis, or in other words, cancer. For instance, banks ignoring their main role as a service to borrowers and lenders. The second idea is recursiveness. Soros finds the agent problem everywhere because System structures are recursive. They repeat themselves at various levels. So, reflexivity and fallibility repeat themselves in every complex organization. First example, the agency problem. Universities. Russell Acuff, another distinguished system thinker, agrees. Read his book, Turning Learning Upside Down. Second example, in politics, the manipulative function takes precedence over the cognitive function. Job number one is getting reelected. The VSM lessons are separate the cognitive domain from the manipulative domain. Structure is recursive. Viable systems contain other viable systems. All connections are circular. Homeostatic balance produces learning. Markets are contract connections not living things. Shock absorption is limited by cybernetic laws. Soros wants systemic control while preserving individual freedoms. This is Spears' argument in his book, Designing Freedom. Legal systems, however, have no choice but to try to balance contradicting values. Banks work in complex adaptive system mode. They hire lots of talent with one-track minds to design creative solutions to existing regulations. Then, after each crisis, some banks fail and drop out of existence and others are rescued and new players are invited to join. Soros knows how to end the game. He suggests that this time a very different corrective action must be taken. I think that instead of being a complex adaptive system, the financial system must accept its role as part of a much larger viable system.